next session. Okay, it says connecting. Awesome. Cool, we've got a, a few people joining us, so we'll, we'll give it a moment and then I will um, start the video. But good morning, everybody. Good morning to everyone joining us. All right, cool. Let me make sure that this session is being recorded and perfect. Um, well, welcome, Omar, and welcome, everybody. We've got our uh, Foresight Ventures uh, workshop happening right now, and I will go ahead and get started with the video. So let's hit play. Perfect. Hi everyone, welcome to Metamorphosis Hackathon hosted by Gitcoin 2022. Uh, I wish to represent First Adventure to give you an overview about what we're building and how we can help developer further succeed in, in the crypto journey. So Force Adventure was established at 2022, 21, and we're dedicated to unveiling the disruptive innovation of blockchain for the next few decades. And we do manage multiple funds, a VC fund and a uh, secondary fund and a fund of fund and also S fund with a AUM exceeding 400 million US dollar. So we do host a belief of a special founder that we would like should be unique and think independently and work aggressively. And uh, we do like to maintain our long-term relationship with a portfolio company that we invested. And we do provide uh, those uh, who we believe in with uh, uh, extensive support um, with uh, a fast growing ecosystem. So our a team is composed of veterans from the top financial and technology company like Sequa Capital, CICC, Google, Bitmain, and many other. So we do hold our special belief when it's come to uh, have uh, investment decision making. Um, so we believe the best strategy is to adhere to our true value and belief. And we do focus on early stage opportunities and we do build um, with the founder and help them to grow with us together. So when it's come to the principles, we always would return to the first principles uh, in, uh, in search of a true paradigm changes during the market uh, fluctuation. And recently we shifted more focus from the infrastructure layer to the protocol and application layers. And so we believe in a project that is uh, crypto native. Uh, we do learn from the history of the internet and rely on the most basic feature of blockchain. Um, we do trust, uh, we do believe in the trust uh, system and software composability and ownership economy, and also uh, token oriented programming. And we're looking for the team that is to truly optimize the product, the development process, and the governing structures, and, uh, and also have their own uh, value. So, uh, why the developer and the builder should choose us to further help them to succeed in the crypto journey. Uh, we're a research-driven investment firm, and we do have our independent research to uncover non-consensus opportunities. We often provide our unique insight on the market change. 
uh, we, we did already publish more than 35 in-depth research report in one year. And recently we re released our report with uh, BCG and um, Big Ed Exchange regarding the global crypto market. And uh, also uh, in terms of the uh, deal sourcing, uh, we do have a 30 full-time employee around the world and we maintain a strong relationship with industry leading institutions and developer community. And we uh, develop our ability to discover potential builders through papers and on GitHub, Twitter, and um, just build our own deal sourcing channels internally and externally. And we do maintain a huge network of portfolio companies and a VC partner to help us um, learn through the different investment process. And uh, after we make the investment decision, we would provide uh, the full aspect of the strategy support, including the investment feedback uh, to the project and also we would have found a good timing for the investment and the support um, project team uh, based on their requirement. And also our investment committee act on time and efficiently cover all blockchain investment tracks and area. So uh, we hope to accelerate the future of blockchain through our special approach. Uh, we do have a full network of influencer and a community and a portfolio management um, approach, which, uh, which includes the full products uh, cycle assistance. And also uh, we do provide the customized support, um, no, no matter it's the marketing or product or a community support we will provide to our portfolio company. And we do give a financial planning assistant and also team building support when it's come to a early stage uh, project. And also we do um, provide um, time to time the industrial mentorship uh, throughout our um, hosted meetups, hackathon and a global conference. And our special asset, including IP companies and also the leading forces in the crypto area of building the bridge of the East and West. So our portfolio company so far would cover most of the track uh, in the blockchain industry. Uh, we do have a D, from DeFi to social DID, social fi DID, and also uh, we invest a few of the venture capital uh, firm. And also we do incubate it and uh, having our own wallet ecosystem, which is big, big keep. Um, and infrastructure wise, uh, we do invest in gaming infrastructure and also storage um, infrastructure, including the airwave ecosystem and uh, also the auditing firms. and. And besides that, we do have our extensive portfolio in gaming, metaverse, NFT, and also uh, centralized finance. So uh, at the last, we do provide a global branding and a media and channels uh, for our own um, fund partners and also our uh, portfolio companies and which include the global conference exposure. Um, throughout this year, we do host many of the um, uh, conferences, uh, side events, and uh, we do have our own uh, hackathon events uh, in which attract and help us to build our own developer communities. Um, and also uh, we're having our own KOL and media networks at the moment, um, which is growing super fast uh, throughout last year, um, and which including the in-house new channel and in different languages um, uh, and our own uh, media uh, in Chinese, which is called Foresight News, you know, which is one of the leading media in the Chinese community. And also we do work with uh, the top three media in the Turkish market. 
Um, and also we do provide our weekly podcast and a Twitter space channel to further discuss um, the uh, new trend and the market changes. Um, and yeah, I, I think uh, that's what we covered here. And I wish uh, uh, we could uh, see more successful project and the builders that we like throughout this uh, whole hackathon for the next month. And we wish the best uh, for all these teams and the a strong builder with uh, the great belief and values to succeed. And I will, uh, I will see you very soon. Awesome. Um, Alisa, or? Yep. All right. We'll take it away. Okay, then. Um, hey there, guys, and good evening, good morning. And uh, today I'll be talking about how we are using ZK and the ZK toolkits we have, our approach to um, Soulbound tokens, which I believe is quite unorthodox in, in some ways and explain the whole technology and some use cases that we're working on. And I hope it will, I don't know, spark a fire and help you through the, the process of Hackathon. So let me share my screen. Uh, yep. I think we got it. So, yeah, uh, is it visible? Yes, I can see it. Yeah, awesome. okay. Cool. So. Um, Hi, and I'm Amar, and I'm the co-founder and the CTO of First Batch, which is an identity generator technology, as we call it, uh, and it's totally privacy-preserving through zk proofs. And what we are aiming for is a is a is to build an infrastructure that is used by multi chains and multiple entities um, to provide detailed entity information and identity information. So before diving into that. Um, I'd like to talk about the problems that we have currently and right now what we are focusing on. And one of the main problems is that wallet data um, it cannot capture the social alignment really um, in an efficient way since it's only feeding itself on the Web3 data itself. And Web3 data is basically transactions and the timestamps where you have actually um, interacted with certain contracts which is also harder to get. It's harder to get in transactions. You need indexers for that. But um, let's say you have it. Um, it's all about transactions and interactions with different contracts. And without labeling and without without a lot of hard work, um, wallet data is currently not enough to understand the social alignment, which is like what people what people are into, what they are directed into, and actually understanding in a user's journey and actually understanding a customer and what their preferences are, which is essential for building a really uh, powerful foundation for a pre ecosystem so that we are able to actually get into scales this the web two space is right now in, you know, because the main problem is um, there is uh, the adoption problem. You, there are a lot of cool protocols, a lot of um, capital inside, but user journey and experience and the amount of users is still, you know, it's at the starting point. So we have to get this in a, in a there are a lot of things to solve about it. So we are attacking one of them. And the other problem is personalization, recommendation and navigation is a really a huge part of it right now, a huge part of our lives right now. It In every product that we use besides Web3, we have personalization and we need navigation in a lot of sense. Um, we also need that in Web3. So um, how can we do this? How can we provide this? Um, this, is some, this is something that we're also really diving, deeply diving in. And the entry barrier is a problem. Um, you need a lot of um, exchanges, KYCs, um, a lot of things for, uh, you, ha you have to get educated for be be before you dive in to a pre ecosystem. And a lot of people are actually working on this to make it more easier. And so that we believe we can also help in this process. And last but not least, the current identity, identity verification systems are really um, complex and they require a lot of effort uh, so that you can provide detailed and verified data. 
and some cases you have to share some personal information with some um, central entities and it requires a, a huge cooperation between different uh, parts of the decentralized network so um, there is a problem of efficiency in there so what do first batch offer uh, what we say is, is that we are creating ai driven attestations so before starting that what is an attestation attestation is basically what an att attestor is giving you it's, it's like a badge which means that you have accomplished something or you have a certain trade or uh, you have completed an action um, it can be anything. It's actually limited by your imagination. But the idea here is that um, attestations, uh, as a, in terminological uh, sense right now for us, is basically related to ZK. And there are ZK attestations, as we call them. So what do I mean by it? Um, ZK attestations are uh, things that you can prove um, without actually revealing any extra information than the information itself. That we have this really common example. I guess you guys, all, you guys know it, but um, just to be clear, uh, when you're entering to a bar, they always give this example. You have to be over the age of 18. And the ZK part and ZK solution to this is that you don't show your age, you don't give the information of your age, but you, you only say that you are above 18, which is enough to enter the bar. So the ZK attestation system works in this way. What, but why do we give this as a solution is that AI-driven attestations is basically a system that you don't share your information with anybody. The whole system itself is not aware of who you are, but also we are offering a system to get in all the Web2 data out there, which like we've been using a lot of social media, a lot of applications before Web3, and we have been doom scrolling feeds and liking stuff and a lot of information about us is out there publicly and it's idle. We cannot use it. So why not let? It, why not we just provide a system that makes us um, that enables us to use this data and create something about us which is only owned by us and that is only usable by us. So the idea here is that what First Batch is doing. Um, think of Discord, GitHub, Reddit, Twitter, um, Spotify, Telegram, all these sources, and there is an AI model, an AI pipeline. Um, working for each system individually, and you have a single zero-knowledge identity, which is, I'll be happy to talk about in a minute. And what you do is you connect your all these Web2 sources to the first batch system with your zero-knowledge identity. So without the system knowing, your, um, knowing who you are, knowing your wallet ID, and uh, what it does is it analyzes the data that you have, outputs something of interests, just like these things that you see, landscape drawings. I'm a chess player. I'm a Linkin Park super fan. Figma is something that I use for designs, etc. All these details about me, all these interests and personal traits. And after they're created, um, the AI model outputs and merges all these things using the Web2 data, but you don't have to connect multiples of them. You can even connect one of them, which will be enough to create a lot of perhaps hundreds of attestations based on your Web2 profile. And the cool thing about it, uh, we can build a data economy around this, which um, creates, you know, which really significantly reduces the barrier to enter um, blockchain economies uh, in that sense. So how does it work? By, uh, by As a user, what you do is you simply um, have a wallet. That's all you have to have. And then, yeah, and a social account, obviously. And what you do is you connect, let's say, your Twitter and the AI model generates the interests based on your data. And then all these interests are created as ZK attestations, which is not public information, which is totally private and which is only visible to you and you only. Even the system itself is not aware whose data is whose. Like the, the, the system itself don't have the no notion of identity. So only you have this data. And once you have this data, once you have these ZK attestations, you mint a soul bond NFT. And this soul bond NFT, NFT is called a person NFT. And with using these two things, you can prove your interests, prove your personal traits, and prove all these identity information about you to anyone in the Web3 space, including people or apps like dApps. And uh, it's all about you. You can hide some information from some dApp and reveal that information to another dApp. And it's totally self-sovereign. And that's the really cool thing about what we're building right now is privacy preserving and it's instant. 
you don't have to deal with a lot of um, interchanges directly one click and all the information about you is created and then you can actually remove the ones that you don't want to exist so um, yeah and this whole one NFT is there's a visual of it and we have this really um, my mind confusing situation where people think that we store the information within the metadata of Solvon NFT, but that is not the case, obviously, because everything in a blockchain is public. So what is the Solvon NFT is for? Well, it's for a few things. First things first, um, it's actually a symbol. It's actually um, a representation that this wallet is registered into first batch system. Well, I don't know anything about the interests or the personal interests that user has, but it's in the blockchain. So it's it is registered in the blockchain. So we don't have to um, deal with these registration systems in off-chain systems. So we don't, it, because when you're dealing with things like registration and you actually count on off-chain data uh, for mutability, uh, sorry, immutability, then we, ha we need some extra methods for data validation. You need some uh, extra mechanisms for nodes and consensus. So what we have is a really a certain blockchain verified stamp of users registration in the system and we we call them we have this timestamp on these nfts so that it's not mutable in any sense and once somebody's entered into a system let's say i'm about to prove my interest to adapt they can see how long did i got this snapshot from um so why do i use the word snapshot um first patch um only retrieves the data when you click on that button and you cannot get the data even after a second of it. So basically it's like a snapshot of your Web2 data for that second. And if a dApp wants some more updated data about you, more updated interest um, data, to, like query that, then you have to remint this personal NFT, which is free, which is gasless. Uh, we are building everything to be gasless in first batch so that um, um, people don't have to deal with um, some UX problems so they don't have to own a certain native token and have to deal with an exchange. Um, this is that we believe something is really important. People be able, people being able to earn actually tokens without having to, um, you know, buy real tokens before in, in an exchange, which can be a really weird idea if you think about it. But uh, that's also what, one of the things that we're working on. So. The other thing is, um, just like a registration thing, we can make this also a white label solution and make sure that only people be uh, belonging to certain dApps can um, mint a certain custom persona NFT, which makes this experience totally uh, available only in dApp ecosystem. Uh, right now, it is not currently something that we are making it available in our testnet, and, but um, that is also something, a really a flexible solution uh, so basically what we do is we verify your registration on blockchain and all we have to do is just to make a read contract to the um, read contract about the NFT. And if you have it, you're already registered and you can interact with our contracts and system, etc. So there you go. And uh, about the interest data and the output, what we call is a persona. So that's why it's called persona NFT. It's a taxonomical information of persona traits. And under that, we have interests. And under that, we have how involved you are to those interests. So it's, it's a three-layer um, information. Let's say we have um, a Web3 builder to trade for me. And, and one of the interests that I might have, it might be OpenSea, right? So as a Web3 builder, I might be inter interested in, I don't know, Solidity is also a part of it. So interests might change, but a personal trait can be the same for multiple people. So we have this taxonomical information that we are able to detect using the AI models that we have specific. So, for example, this is one of my outputs after I minted. We have this persona test, which um, the more socials you connect, um, we are getting more sure that you have actually, you, we're getting more sure of your personal level, which we rank among five levels. And uh, there's a persona map of mine. And when you click on developer, you see the sub uh, divisions of it, which is web development, DevOps, machine learning, and game development. And for the web three citizen part, I, I didn't click on it, but there is all the web three technologies that I, I'm interested in, also in the web three builder part. So these are the things that I'm interested in. And the AI system created this only looking to my Twitter, I read it data. And 
right now this is only visible to me and I'm able to prove this to other dApps. So about the architecture and just a simple overview of how the thing works is um, we have a data retrieval and the AI models where we have um, node systems and we have, well, we're working about the, uh, the consensus, the data validation, also the, uh, the runtime run signatures and making sure that the open source code is run by, um, the, the, the code is not changed obviously. So the, in the mid layer we have zero knowledge attestations which is the ZK part that well, we are building on. And it allows us to create ZK, no, ZK zero knowledge attestations based on the interests, interest maps created by the AI models. And on the third part, we have proof verification and the token distribution systems, and it's fully on-chain. So in the right part, it's fully on-chain. In the middle part, it's in the off-chain part. And on the left side, we have AI models which is actually in a distributed, also in a distributed, decentralized manner, works in a decentralized manner. So in more detail in the architecture, um, it kind of looks confusing, and perhaps in the first look. Uh, so I just, I'm gonna hop on a little details. And like I said, we have blockchain, so it's, it's a hybrid structure. We are both using off-chain and on-chain systems. We also have external sources. So one of the problems that we deal with is that um, Twitter is a Web2 external source, and it, it does have my data. And it's storing in that, like, it's storing in its servers. So one, when you're going to do an AI analysis using that data, you have to work on Web2, so just like an off-chain environment. And when you're working in an off-chain environment, security is something that you have to deal with. And making sure that if you're building in a decentralized manner, if, you're, if you have this aim to be fully decentralized, then um, some problems may occur, including um, the data validation. So how am I going to be sure that AI is actually creating a valid output from my data? And on the second uh, hand, like the second side, we have the problem of data leakage. So. Uh, if, if I make uh, a system of nodes, just like this processing node that we have, like how am I going to how am I going to be sure if if I allow this on these nodes, just like Chainlink, um, how am I going to make sure that these nodes are not leaking data? Because unlike Chainlink, uh, a dishonest node can only um, vote for something that is um, wrong in the system, which will be penalized by the tokens. But data leakage is a problem because even if one node is leaking data, that is a problem. So that is that can that is a problem you cannot solve with consensus. It's, it's not about majority. It's about like you have to have a zero percentage of data leakage. So um, the, the 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 idea that we're working on is that we have contracts. We have a main contract that allows us to verify proofs on zk. We also deploy DAP specific contracts for every DAP that is using first batch. We deploy a specific contract. So that um, DApps have the role to manage and actually um, read the the inner inner workings of the contract and actually interact with the contract, but also um, users are directly um, their permission systems are directly stored on the DApp contract. So without further confusion, um, just going to give you an example of the pipeline, and a user is basically requesting uh, through the Oracle contract and asking for an analysis. So that system is only aware of the jobs that it's listening to. And the processing nodes is a, uh, is a list of nodes that has the same um, responsibility, which is to take an OAuth token from the Twitter uh, using a, a, a webhook, let's say, a sort of thing. And once they take the token, they analyze the data, they, they retrieve the data from Twitter and then they, they send this data to the personal detection stick, depending on which social media you're working with. So the key, one of the key parts is that processing nodes should not be aware of the wallet ID. Um, should not be, so the, the whole privacy thing is uh, belonging into this. So um, we, sh we should make sure that the Twitter data and the username and all the analysis should not be paired with the wallet's ID or wallet information or any sense. Um, that is like the first layer of the privacy. And on the second layer, like I said, we talk about the problems of leakage. 
And pro what processing nodes does is they all they all take this token or share this token with a ref like simple consensus. They're basically sending this to AI models, pipelines, retrieving the, the analysis. And after reaching a consensus, they are um, updating the merged data they are storing on a decentralized storage. So what do I mean by decentralized storage? It's basically um, just like a SQL structure, um, just like a relational database, but it's it's totally, totally decentralized. And um, also would like to have a shout out to Quill, which is also a, a previous Gitcoin workshop um, attendee. And they are, we're actually in an active conversation with them to build a more efficient, better decentralized storage on this sense for the SQL part. So uh, the cool thing about ZK is that um, we don't have to store anything but ID commitments. So what are ID commitments? Uh, what users what users are doing is once they first connect their wallets, they're creating a zero knowledge identity using their signatures. And uh, they are, after they create this um, zero knowledge identity, um, they are creating something called identity commitment, which is like a public key that, that can be shared throughout the network. And uh, they are sharing their identity commitment with first batch. And the analysis is always paired with ID identity commitment. So after the, the analysis is done, let's say multiple sources or a single source, um, what we do is we are registering all these identity commitments into certain groups um, so that we are making sure that they are in um, certain interests. So every group is like an interest. Every group is like a persona trait, developer, Figma, I don't know, Linkin Park, super, super fun. It can be anything. So what AI do, is doing is that they're simply registering, storing those information in certain groups. And with an updater mechanism, we are storing Merkle roots on a contract. And after we store the Merkle roots and we are scheduling this and constantly updating the Merkle roots, what user can do is they can simply create a ZK proof on the client side and they can share this proof with the contract and verify this on chain. And after the, this verification is done, DAP can check if a wallet is allowed to, um, I don't know, enter a certain event or perform a certain action, basically showing that you are belonging into a certain group of people that share the interest of basketball or I don't know, design or coding, it can be anything. So um, might be complex, but just gonna give you a quick overview of the cases that we have, which is like four um, pinnacle versions of these cases is data aggregation, gated events, ticketing, and social alignment. So what is data aggregation? First batch is working as uh, events, like an event system. And you can simply create an event uh, it's just like a link, just like a Google authentication where you click on before you log in to a site. And once you create this, um, you can actually directly join if you have a persona NFT and you don't have to have any interest or, or anything. And once you join to this event, you are one of the attendees and the, you're not stored in an array or anything. The, the information, but the information of you, that you have, the interest that you have is... Um, aggregated once there, there's enough amount of users. And what do I mean by it? Uh, the event creator can, after some time, let's say there are seven, 8,000 um, participants in an event, they'll be able to see the segmentation of interests and the personal levels calculated by first batch, which allows you uh, a detailed data, data aggregation on the um, participants. But what do I mean by participants? Basically, the people who clicked to join. So. 74 is like 7.4% are FPS gamers and 15% are crypto traders and like 18% like are above rank three. So this data aggregation gives a lot of insight about um, the event, but it's all about how you are positioning the event. So let's say you're a DAP, you can um, add this to your, like make sure the whole, all of your user base actually joined this event and you can actually create a model of your user base but you can work in more segmented fashion. You can add this as a trigger to a certain event of yours. Um, if people vote certain NFT in your system, you can aggregate the data. So this is about like, this is actually limited by the creativity. And a second case is a gated event. What do I mean by gated event? Is that using this, this AI-driven attestations, 
we can actually create events that only people who have certain interests or certain personal traits can actually join in. But to cre increase the efficiency, we also added the option of token gating. So token gating is a thing already in Web3 where people have a, a token or, um, I don't know, yeah, make, making sure that before an airdrop, you can make sure that somebody has a token uh, or cer certain NFT, um, which is the same thing. Uh, but the second part that we are adding in as a layer is the persona gating. So um, with first batch, you can actually add it like this, adding by the contract address. You can add the uh, amount of the tokens that you want as a gate. But on the second hand, we allow a list of information, list of interests uh, that is in our default catalog. And when once you click on a woman's fashion, somebody who is only interested in women's fashion will be able to um, enter to this event by actually proving that they are um, using these ZK proofs and verifying them on chain. So what about like if I want multiple interests or what about I want something more um, complicated, let's say. Well, that's something we call custom persona. You can basically create this map of things where like right now it says someone who is actually interested in Ethereum, Polygon and Binance. But like this is an end, like that person should be interested in all three of them or someone who is interested in zero knowledge protocols should be able to um, join this event. So this is something that I um, determined. And once you create this event, the event screen is basically like a link, like I said, and if you have these attestations, which is created by the AI, then you're able to join in to the event. So let's say um, we're going to work on an airdrop. Um, yeah, you have these token gates and you have these contract interactions where, where you can scrape the uh, blockchain data and check on this. But as a third layer, um, why don't just I can create this simply uh, using first batch? I'm going to say um, people who are going to take this token should be above a certain personhood like layer above um, rank three, and then they should be interested in zero knowledge protocols, which is, let's say I'm going to, I'm building something about zero knowledge. I'm a protocol, basically uh, distributing my token to people who are interested in that specifically. I can make sure by using this event mechanism. And what you do is you create this um, ZK identity for this case like this. And then once you create your recreate your ZK identity, which is not stored obviously on anywhere. You have to recreate it on every, um, every um, I don't know, possible interaction with the system. And after that, since it's ga gasless, you have to make another signature so that the, we, are, we can use the relayers. And once you create the proof on chain, a proof on client side, then you verify this on chain and you're able to join to this event. Um, this has a lot of creative usage. This can be used in a in a in a metaverse uh, as a bouncer as a exclusive exclusiveness provision, but also it can be for airdrops. It can be for anything that is um, about segmenting uh, the interactions that we have. Um, the second and sorry, the third um, part that I can talk about is a ticketing system, which is um, basically right now. Let's say I'm gonna have an event for 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 uh basically about blockchain and i want people to be able to join in but i want a list of um i have a list of people who i want to invite and uh we want this to be totally privacy preserving so um how do i do it uh, asking for wallets is also an option but a bad option so why not just be able to select people from twitter discord or perhaps send them emails directly and let them um let them just prove that they are actually the ones that are invited in from the Twitter or Discord and email. And after they prove it, they can actually mint a solve on the NFT for, the spe for specifically for the event. So this is the third and powerful use case for the solve on NFTs for the ticketing systems. And we are making sure that somebody who I invited from Twitter, Discord, or email are actually joining in to my, to my event, but I'm, I don't know their vault address and I will never know that. So, um, Basically, um, once once I know the vault address, I don't know who they are. So the, the two of the informations are totally irrelevant. And the system allows you to show a QR code. You can basically, if this is a real life event, you can basically scan this and see that um, they're actually eligible. Or um, they can simply uh, do this to a contract call if they're making this online. So um, the fourth and the most um, intense part that we're working on 
is the social alignment and the interest graph that we are building on. And what is this? All these interest data with the personal NFT holders has an alternative and powerful usage, which is can, which can be ca categorized in these three important, um, let's say, sections: wallet to wallet alignment. So, how like how would be how cool would it be if we if we are able to actually measure the social alignment between two wallets? How aligned? How uh, same they are? How similar they are in in like in the interest wise? how aligned their social interests are, which is a huge question, which is really important and has a really, um, really um, in-depth use cases for many um, structures, but we call this in a cheesy way, the Tinder for crypto. Uh, but also for the contents, post communities, channels, anything that is non, um, like, like any non-human structure, you're able to um, self-label these contents and basically measure the similarity and measure the alignment between a wallet, a person, and uh, the content. So what it does is basically the, it will be the foundation for recommendation systems and personalization in Web3, but also vault clustering. So I have a user base and I can basically cluster them based on how socially aligned they are. And this is a really important problem. Also, uh, we, we tell you, told about, like, we wrote about this in one of its papers in the SPTs. So the um, the interest data might be used, which is an uh, important part of it. And because in the DAOs, um, there is this bias voting problems and people who actually share the same vision, um, they're just gonna vote, vote for the same thing. And even though the system itself is equal, this creates a lot of biased situations. So why not we are able to cluster them and actually calculate a coefficient for what voting and then make this thing more unbiased in any sense. But also it's not limited to that. It can be uh, a DAPS customer segmentation tool. Um, it can be a lot of things. It can be really useful for socials and web tree. So we're currently working on a permissionless um, API, all tokenized, all incentivized and uh, make this interest data available for querying, um, actually for calculating the alignments between wallets. And um, yeah, like, why do I add to this? Because um, two of, let's say two people there are, user A and user B, they have shared, they share this different interests. Um, they might be um, different. They might be both sports fans, but one of them might be interested in totally in basketball and football oriented where and the, or the second one, someone could be totally interested in cricket and, I don't know, Lakers. So it's a huge difference. It's a huge, uh, actually, uh, a different spot in the system. So basically saying some two-person as sports fans is not enough to measure, the, to calculate the alignment. But we also need to interest the entities. So that is what First Batch does um, to make it more efficient and more solid. And lastly, my last slide, sorry for talking a lot, we are... Uh, we are making this to be a multi-chain system. Right now, it's this, the system itself is available for every EVM compatible system, every EVM compatible blockchain. We are building on Polygon. And um, we are able to deploy a single contract. And then we are actually able to operate in that blockchain as well. But the cross-functionality is yet to be uncovered. And um, that is also one of the crucial parts of the roadmap. So um, thank you so much for listening. Um, um, yeah, thank you for this time and see. Awesome. Um, I believe we had one question in the chat. Let me see if I can show this. What happens if I do that? All right, this is from Helios. Okay, um, yeah, Helios, thank you for the question. And how the social data is fed to the AI, which is like the, one of the crucial parts of the project, um, what it does is simply you are using the authentication OAuth system, which is a token created by Twitter. And once you have it, you're able to retrieve the data of only that, only for that specific user for a specific time, let's say an hour or six hours. So using that OAuth token, our processing nodes retrieve those tokens and like a bunch of them retrieves them. And then they are, they are pull, pulling the data. And once they pull the data, they're sending this to the AI model. And so the, the data, like if you're asking 
how the data or like if the format of the data, but I'm going to ex explain both of them. So once the processing nodes have them, the um, we are basically using a contextualized social graph for Twitter. So like I said, every uh, social media has its own recipe. But for Twitter, we have a contextualized social graph where we are modeling a lot of um, communities with language models. So what we have is basically a list of followings and followers, and that's enough. So we get a, not the followers, actually only the followings. So the data is fed in the format, um, and then we gave it to the, like I said, in the AI system, the AI pipeline, and the output is a set of interests, ju just directly a set of labels, and they all receive it, and then using the, the RAF-like consensus, they're able to understand and reach a consensus and like make sure the data is valid in that sense. And for the data leakage, um, processing nodes run a publicly available code, which is um, you create signatures for the runtime, so making sure that the code is not changed, just like the ones in the Docker. Um, even you change a single uh, space, you have to change the signature. So you have it's, you have to change. Um, you create a new output, new version. So making by that we're making sure the the open source is available, so that the code is not changed and nodes can be run by anybody, which is part of our roadmap. Like I said, so that is how the data is fed into the system. Hope that explains a little more. Thank you. Cool. All right. Any other questions? Oh, he said yes. Yeah, sounds great. Nice. So, um, yeah, uh, I, by the way, I can drop any links of documents or please f like feel free to email me on anything that you're interested in. Um, let me share just a few links for the chat. Cool. Oh, and then they want to know how do how do they reach you? Yeah. Would you like me to drop yeah. your email in the chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm also doing that, but um, if it's available on your side, I can oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm running on messages or the feed. Yeah, and messages. It should be on the right side panel. Um, there's a chats icon. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I, I just I guess can't. Huh. Yeah. Let me check. Okay. It. okay. Oh yeah. You got it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I'm just sending uh, our white paper link, but also uh, more of a technical one um, to be more, um, I don't know. It, it's more of a in detail. We don't share with anybody, everybody, sorry, but um, I guess just these folks here, they're gonna get quite easy with it. And here's my email. So um, thank you all for your time. Oh wait, let's see, did it, I just wanna make sure they went through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did I did I send it in the right place? Let's see, I don't see it. Does everyone else see it? Maybe maybe I don't see it. Let's see. Well, uh, um, I sent also the email. Um, I, I let me just resend the email also. Um, oh, there yeah. we go. Nice. No, I see that. I see that email. We got it. Oh, here they are. Okay. Oh, my thing is just lagging. Awesome. No, okay. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, unless there's any more questions, feel free to reach out to Omer, and I will go ahead and end the session. And thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for listening, and have a good night, day, or I don't know which time when you are, but take care. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.